so it's loud, people are outside, we've pretty much broken all the rules. And I'm gone. And according to Ivan's text, the cops are on their way. So yeah, we're kind of fucked. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this video is a part two to a video I did last month. It's supposed to be last week. Now it's last month, don't worry about it. I ruined a giant YouTuber party. <laughs> Yay. And trust me, to understand what we're gonna get into, you need to watch part two. So go ahead, click the eye in the top right to check it out. Please do that. I need the watch time, but, but be sure to come back, please. Anyways, uh, here's a quick recap for everyone who did watch it when it dropped and don't wanna rewatch a whole 20 minute video. All right, so me and my boy Frugal Aesthetic, along with some others, decided to throw a party at our Airbnb during VidCon. Uh, trouble is, um, that's illegal, which we knew from doing the previous year, and which we didn't care about from us being awful people. So to make sure we didn't get kicked out like we almost did last time, we set a couple ground rules for the party. Uh, one, we can't have too many people in the house. Two, we can't let people outside. And three, I need to be around to make sure things were all right in case the cops did come, because the house is in my name, and we don't need the cops snitching on us to the house owners and getting us kicked out. So, yeah, I'm not down for that. Now, during said party, uh, I blacked out and didn't remember a single thing and ended up waking up to a text from my friend Ivan that said the cops had been called that night. Why they came? Uh, no idea. Were we getting kicked out? No idea. Thankfully, Vibby collected testimonies of everyone's experience at the party to figure out what went wrong that night. And apparently, everything did. Not only was the party just wild, but there were too many people, people outside, including me. For some reason, when I said the rule was to not go outside, it was my rule. And at the very last moment, my black ass disappeared. A very competent bunch we are. So we're finally here with the second half of the tape. So let's see what happened when the cops were on their way. For me, everything starts getting fuzzy and blurry. I don't remember exactly what happens. I see that the situation is way out of hand. People are like, hey, Christian, um, uh, someone's outside. I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's the pizza guy. I don't ah! know. I go outside. It's the Anaheim City neighborhood watch people. They pull up to the house and go, hey, we got a noise complaint from the city. You guys are being a bit rowdy. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'll, I'm going to sober up now so I can handle this. And I'm going to go find Kurt so that we can handle it together as a team. As the night keeps going to about 11.30, I don't hear Kurt anymore, so I wonder where he is. So me as the only sober one, search for him. Six foot tall black man in a sea of, of, of animators. I'm like, I'm bound to find Michael Jordan in a sea of golf players. It's, it's, it's gonna happen. And eventually, I found him. Kurt's blacked out in his bedroom. So uh, how do you put it? Schlumped. Dude is like a piece of fish over rice. All right, pause real quick. So there's a lot of footage from the party, like IRL footage, which I've been hesitant to share because you know, privacy. I want to like keep everyone's like personal information private, except mine. I don't care about my privacy. So I was definitely out of it and there's plenty of video evidence. Yo, Kurt is gone. Kurt, where are you, man? Kurt, do you know where you are? Yo, everybody's filming you. Yeah, not my best moment. Uh, anyways, continuing with the tape. I decided to leave him alone and try to keep everyone away from Kurt. Oh man, I gotta handle this by myself. He's so drunk. He's passed out. I don't know where his phone is. I don't know where his wallet is. I'm like, someone take care of our mans. I'm gonna try and get everyone out because we're being fucking loud. We try to get everyone to quiet down, which they do, and we try to get everyone out. So while everyone is figuring out which groups they're going home in, they all step outside the house. Which is worse. Yeah. It's worse now. Everyone's on the lawn. If we had a normal can play in the house? Imagine how loud we were outside. Now, I didn't realize that simply calling an Uber takes 15 minutes. No, I don't mean waiting for it to arrive. I mean pressing the button to have the Uber pick you up. Just press the button. It's cool though. I think the noise is the noise level was at a reasonable level. I was wrong. It was fine. It's basic math. Everyone talking at room volume, that ah! adds up. And obviously the neighbors are gonna ah! hear that. So as everyone's leaving, it's the Anaheim City Neighborhood Watch and the police. So I was just as drunk as everyone. You know, I'm fucking hammered too. I had, I'm a couple drinks in, I'm riled up. And the police come and I'm like, yeah, man, we're, we're just a bunch of YouTubers here. We're, a lot of us are from out of state. Some of us are international. We're here for VidCon. A lot of people over here don't really get to see each other. So it's really nice getting to see your community in person. You know what I mean? And you know, I think I played it off pretty well. I was uh, talking to the cop and he seemed like a nice guy. He, he, I think he thought I was a nice guy. Joke's on you, I'm depressed. So he was like, cool son, just make sure you get everyone home safe. 
and uh, make sure you're not making too much noise because the neighbor's complaining. I'm like, thanks, man. Yeah, we're getting everyone home and calling everyone Ubers. That's why we're out here and it's taking a long time because it's kind of late and I do apologize for being a bit loud. He's like, okay, cool, thanks. Um, over, bye, I'm gonna get some donuts or whatever fucking cops do at 2 a.m. Eventually, everyone leaves after 30 minutes of just being outside. Now, it's around 1.32 a.m. and as the last person is getting in the car and as I'm a about to close the front door of the house. I hear fucking footsteps on the grass. I don't know if you can hear that. I hear footsteps on the grass. I see two people walking up to me. It's just two like old people. Two lovely old people, by the way. I don't know who these people are, but then again, I really didn't know anyone in this party. And they immediately ask me, are you Kurt? In my head, uh oh. I answer no, and then they ask, can you get Kurt? We are the owners of this house. Oh, fuck. The owner has joined the chat. In my head, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Panic. It's like playing Smash and three stocks. You got the Anaheim City Police, the Anaheim City Neighborhood Watch, you got the police, and you got the owners. It's a big three stocks. I'm over here, fuck, ice climbers. I've lost my Nana. He's drunk. I'm fucking one stock with one ice climber, dog. That recovery ain't shit. I respond by saying he's asleep. They persist and I let them in the house. Apparently, the police had called in three times, but because it was the middle of the night, they didn't check who the number was and they declined the call. So when they finally picked up the call, they were frazzled. Next thing I see is Christian talking to the owner. Christian does a pretty good job at diverting their attention. Hey, so I'm Kurt. You know, here's me pretending to be Kurt. I'm not black. I'm not six feet. I can't jump that high, but whatever. We're Kurt Ritchie now. Meanwhile, I slip away and me and Andres tried to get Kurt up. And man, did we try. He's got the spirit of alcohol in his system and he's, there's no way he's conscious. I specifically remember me saying, Kurt, the owners are here. His response, a wave of the hand with his eyes still closed. Kurt, the cops are here. Another wave. Kurt, we're going to jail. Another wave. Now, I don't know about you, but I thought we're screwed. I go back out and it seems like Christian has actually handled it all. I'm sorry for making all the noise. We're getting everything cleaned up now. As everyone was, good job on the f team. Good job animators on cleaning with me. So everyone's cleaning. They're like, cool. Thank you so much, Kurt. I just need to see your ID. And well, yeah, so I'm not actually Kurt. <laughs> So I think it was MJ and I go find Kurt to get his ID and Kurt is just sprawled on his bed. We get him to his feet, but he is not coherent at all. And we pick him up marionette style and we're just dangling him across the hallway. We come to a point where Christian can see him, but the owner can't see that angle. Christian takes one look at passed out, like half a smile Kurt, and he's like motions. He's like, oh, sh no, like get him the f out of here. So Andres and I decide it's better to keep him in the room versus letting the owners see him like this. And I'm drunk. MJ's, he sobers out. So he, he, he was guiding me through the whole process. But I mean, I'm like, oh, not, not a good idea. Time to take Kurt back. But then Kurt decides that I want to pee and starts walking out the door. He walks two steps out the door. And if the owners just look left, they'll see a stumbling, mumbling, hey, Kurt. So I run out, just grab him and toss him to the bed without the owners noticing a single thing. Okay. That sounds worse than what it was. I was just trying to protect them, okay? All right, chill, forget about that. Andres watches over Kurt while I go out. Christian somehow finessed all of this and had them just take Kurt's ID, not mine or anyone else's. But I did give them that one Australian dude's passport. So whoever is from that dude from Melbourne, and they have your <laughs> have your passport on file. He reassured them that everything would be fine. They left. We sighed in relief. And next thing I remember is the house is empty ex except for like the few passed out stragglers. That was the main thing. We got out. It's scot free. No one went to jail. No one died. No one <laughs> died. We're cool. Yeah, we weren't cool. So that was the whole tape. Now cut back to me learning all this. And I'm well. Maybe let's just say a lot more sweaty than anyone should be after waking up in someone else's house. Y'all, like there is a ton of things that could be happening to us now that all that just went down. And I wasn't sure what our fate was. And I was especially scared that we get kicked out. I go through my phone notifications and then boom. 
There it is. A new notification that kind of sticks out from the rest. A notification on the Airbnb app. And guess what? Uh, it's a message from the owners of the house. Who, who, who thought? Bro, I opened that message like it was results from the clinic. Cause that's what this was. Are we HIV positive or is it just like crabs? What, what's going on? So I open it up and man, let me tell you, our fate makes me think, I really wish they said we were just homeless. But you're gonna have to find out exactly what that fate was next time. Look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I had to, okay? This is a whole nother arc. It just did not phonetically fit. So catch y'all soon to see what happens to us. And trust me, it wasn't pleasant. So great content. <laughs> oh, what's up, y'all? Hope y'all enjoyed that part two. Sorry, I had to do you like that with adding a part three. I really didn't want to but that's how life works sometimes. Now, as you might see on the side, I have a little something scroll going on. I don't know if it's this side or this side. I don't, I'm, I'm too dumb to know. I have a little Patreon scroll. That's because I launched a Patreon. Still not officially launched yet. I'm gonna make like a whole little video about that. And then I'm gonna have like a little thing for people who joined before that real video drops. Um, secret link at the bottom. The real launch will come soon. All right, that's about it for me. Uh, stay tuned for part three. All right, y'all. Peace. <laughs>